The focus of our 2022 dig was on an area called the Coalfold, which we knew from documents and maps was used as a coal depot by the Wagonway. Map evidence shows that the Wagonway ran through the Coalfold and in fact split into three different tracks, so we hoped we'd pick up traces of the Wagonway and how the Coalfold worked and developed. The Tranent to Cockenzie Wagonway was the first railway in Scotland being opened in 1722 to carry coal from collieries at Tranent down to the salt pans and to the harbour at Cockenzie. William Dixon, the Wright who built the first railway, mentions working in the coal fold in his journal. So the archaeologists oh, yeah, hoped to yeah, find yeah. some evidence of this pioneering 300 year old railway. Hi, I'm Ben I'm from Wessex Archaeology uh, from Edinburgh and we've been helping out the Wagonway for the last five or six years I suppose uh, with survey and support and community engagement. So what we've done this time is we've brought our industrial archaeology collections from um, our Sheffield office which is fairly similar-ish to the industry that was happening around Kenzie and East Lothian uh, at the time. So we've got examples of glass making, we've got examples of uh, the iron and steel industries, um, which were happening around Kenzie and, and um, East Lothian in general, along with the coal mining uh, and other industries as well. So these are sort of little bits and bobs just to sort of show you the sort of industrial archaeological finds you get, or we might also find on this site as well. Um, Less so on the cutlery works, that's a, a sort of Sheffield specific thing, but you have got the glass slag. Um, so this is the, the leftover material from the glass making uh, that the, the, the Wagon team have found at, at the glass works site further east along the coast. Um, crucible pieces, so you can see all the, the, the really thick uh, heat resistant walls of the crucibles. So these are all, these I think are from glass making as well. Um, and then pieces from the uh, the found iron foundry industry, so that's a, a metal mould, a, a mould for um, metal uh, casting there. Um, so it sort of gives people an idea of the finds that they might find over the next course of the next few days or in the coal fold. Um, I've only been going a few hours or so, but if that, and already there's bits of pottery and bits of, uh, of other archaeological material coming out of the the excavation, so hopefully in the next few days there's been even more. Um, and we can sort of start adding that material to this material to sort of get a, a much closer idea of, of the archaeology of the problem. So what we have is we've got some clay and we've got our brick mould. So our brick mould is quite a small one, which I think has probably been a little bit more harder to make bricks with. But you season it with sunflower oil, like you would a cake. And then you make a rough brick shape with your clay. And then last step is covering it with sand. So the sand helps it um, come out of the mould. Alright, so making bricks is uh, getting, it, getting it into the mould is actually a lot more difficult than one would expect. <laughs> Voila! <laughs> so then you cut off the top. And another dash. There we go. Bottom. And there you go, you have your brick. And then you can label it.
Well, it's the very first trench of the day, and uh, I put about two mapping strokes in and came straight down onto a wall that's not on any plan. Um, so, at the moment, clearing that off, we've got appearing at the very bottom there um, another sleeper plate which is in situ. Um, so, this slightly curving wall could be um, associated with bringing the coal into the yard and a, a retaining wall for a bunker, or it may be a later construction. Won't really know until we get down and see how deep it is. This is the end of our first day on our 2022 um, big dig here at the coal fold. Uh, the coal folds you can see behind you with some of our trenches we put in. Um, off to a flying start, to be perfectly honest. We've got, we're walking into the, the entrance through the, where the wagons would have come down into the coal fold. We've got a, a sleeper block in situ here. You can see the, the holes for the iron chair we think that's in situ uh, we knew that was there because we could see it on the surface poking through the the modern uh, modern surface deposit um, what we've got which is unknown um, we didn't know it was here at all as you can see we've got this quite substantial wall coming through here so we've chased it down uh, it goes underneath the tarmac and we've got it just coming into the trench in front of the the old mini there. We think it's a retaining wall. What we think at the moment is it would have been a lot higher. The wagon way would have come along the top of it. Um, we've got evidence for two buttresses holding it up, which I'll show you in a minute. A lot higher, wagon way on top, and then some sort of turning mechanism for dumping the coal into the coal yard. It looks like it's only got one proper face on the outside here. You can see it not quite nicely coming down. The outs the the inner face is not as well preserved. I don't think it's a face properly, but we'll have a look at that in the next couple of days. So we've got one of the buttresses here, and you can see it's got a reused sleeper block in the end of it with the holes there and there. So we've got one there, and we've got another one there. We're presuming they're buttresses just for holding back this, this raised embankment. Uh, so this is what we've been concentrating on at the moment, um, cleaning this up. We'll concentrate again on it tomorrow morning when we've just opened a trench up there. And we've got a trench opened up just on the far side that when we get our visitors, members of the public coming to help us tomorrow, we'll concentrate on that. Uh, we've got another big trench down the middle which is proving a bit problematic at the moment so we'll re-excavate that and re-look at that tomorrow. So yeah. For our first day, not a bad start at all. Second day of the coal field excavation and what we're uncovering is this monumental retaining wall running from the coal field entrance right through underneath the strap minis and probably beyond. There's probably a retaining wall for a loading bank. So you need to imagine this being at least two metres higher with the wagon way running on top coming from street level. So if you pan to the right, we can see a sleeper block probably in situ at high level. So imagine that coming across level, a couple of metres higher. And then what we've got here, with a pair of piers or buttresses. And what we think's happening is out here somewhere, we have a wagon turned over with a coal wagon on it. 
It's turned to 90 degrees and it's run out beyond this returning wall where there's a tipping mechanism between these two piers. The wagon tips down and sheds its load of coal into either a, into a waiting vehicle or a low level wagon way down here. We can see in here in this corner we've just got layers upon layers of layers of tipping of material that's come down from that wall, layers of small coal and burning and what we've got actually built into these piers got one two sleeper blocks this is all really exciting because usually when stays like these are excavated they're for loading coal into ships so this is what's called a land sail wharf this might be from 1815 when the Cadells rebuilt in iron, or it might be when Robert Stevenson, the father of Robert Louis Stevenson, came along and modernised everything in Cockenzie. So it could be quite early, maybe 1815, maybe 1829. It's all really exciting. I can't think of anything like this, a land, coal land sale wharf staying being excavated before, so watch this space. Nice well, smooth so far, maybe another side. Last day of the, the dig at the coal fold. Um, we're here before everybody else starts just to talk a bit strategy. Uh, we've got Ant. Uh, Ant's been working in here. Shortest it's, person on site. Yes. Biggest yeah. hole. It's a bit messy at the moment, yep. but what we've got, this wall I'm standing on, um, which is not as not, it's as, not, it's not as robust as we thought it no, could be. No, it's not. We've got the bottom of it there. But curiously, it's still going down between these stone features that we're calling buttresses, for want of a better description. Um, it's got this batter on it, just batter. there. The batter. That's yeah. I keep getting that wrong. Yeah, it's got this batter on it there. We've got evidence underneath there where Ant was working yesterday of a, a timber beam, a decayed timber beam, coming there. We've almost got the bottom of this buttress yeah. pier thing. We're going to take the rest of this out and and see what happens today. Um, yeah, it's obviously got something to do with supporting this wall. Obviously much higher, we don't know how high, and potentially a turntable thing at the yep. back here. That's that's our current theory. So we, what we've got, we've got this wall coming through. Yeah. It's only a couple of courses, presumably for most of its length, we've got here where there's massive reinforcement, it goes down. Yeah. It, it widens behind us, it widens with this batter, we've then got these two piers. So it's clearly taking a great weight 
probably from up here yeah. where the tipping mechanism is for the wagons and the three foot four inch gauge wagon will fit beautifully between those two piers so wagon comes on and then the whole weight is shifted forwards taken by the batter and the depth of this wall coming forward and then down onto here yeah. and it's going through this it's laser deposition shell uh, yeah, like we've got there inches yeah. thick of shell and then it's cold as far as i and can it's, see it's all right scallop shell isn't it it's all scallop shell yeah. yeah yeah but we now know that the stuff out there uh basically the the, the contemporary surfaces in this lower area of the yard were uh, were a lot lower yeah um well basically every small sondage we've put in the top 50 centimeters or so it's it's late 19th century yeah waste that's full of crockery uh intact bottles bits of shoe bits of everything else so it's basically used as landfill to level this area up yeah. so we've, we've got what looks like a, a higher area and then a lower area down here but we don't seem to have any sort of contemporary surfaces Not yet. down there at all yet um by got, the end of the day hopefully got a lot of coal yes yeah. either coal slack coal dust and coming out of here the, the basal layers decent chunks of house coal and it's, it smells quite tar, it's, it's, it's bituminous or semi-bituminous coal. Yeah. It's intriguing it's, that it's you're, getting the, coal. you're getting the big lumps out here yeah. and my sondage, the furthest away one, all I was getting was dross. I, I, think, just I think this dross. is all stuff that is, as the wagons tip, this is stuff that's being shed from the load yeah. and it's just it's falling down the sides. Falling down yeah. the sides, coming down in here. Yeah, I think you're right there actually. Yeah. So today, um, last day, lots of recording to do as per usual, uh, and we're going. We've got the people, so we're going to throw people at just extending some of the areas, just to see if it gives us a, a, a more coherent picture. There's obviously we're presuming because this level's higher here, presumably it's higher there, obviously lower in the middle. That there must be some sort of way of keeping this material back either side, whether it's a a wooden palisade, a wooden fence or something like that. We'll hopefully get some remains of that. So we'll yeah. see what happens. Yeah. First surprise of the day, um, Kenny's been working away in here. We've got the edge of this buttress, this pier coming here. Um, this is just quite literally just appeared. Um, it's it's a hole, basically, as you can see, but it goes down. At least 70 centimeters. Um, we were expecting our revetment coming out here to keep this stuff back. Uh, that's clearly what it is. It's it's a post hole. Um, uh, there's been a post in there that's decayed in situ or it's been pulled out leaving a, a void and it's basically just self-excavated itself by appearing in the ground. We can see we've got all this uh, coal deposits here. This underneath here is basically natural sand. The wall is bottom there. This side of the post hole is the redeposited natural sand. This side is coal, so there's a division across there, and this has been our our revetting that we were suspecting, coming slightly a, a different alignment than we thought. We were thinking there, 
it's actually clearly going across there just with the edge of the pier so yeah intriguing hopefully there will be a series of them running across there which Kenny will get when he drops this lot here uh, keeping the the coal debris away from the the foundations in the bottom of the wall so yeah self excavating post holes that's a new one on me <laughs> Um, so what I've got here is differential GPS, in this case a Leica one. Uh, what this does is it uses a triangulation service and a connect correction service to um, locate the position of the net rover and therefore the position at that point. Uh, in this case down to an accuracy of about two to three centimetres. Um, and that's all done through triangulation from a known base point because GPS signal uh, has a random scatter within it that basically means that the accuracy is usually around two to three meters which is fine for when you're trying to get somewhere in your car but isn't very useful for archaeological uh, planning and archaeological um, excavation uh, recording so what this does it triangulates through all those uh, coordinate correction systems and it gets us down to a two centimeter uh, accuracy which is good enough for um, archaeological recording so what i'm currently doing is i'm going to go along and tap in the control points that Alan has laid out on his drawn plan and that means that they can be located within uh, the national grid um, coordinate system that we that is used by the OS and everyone else in, on mainland Britain pretty much uh, and I'm also going to get some spot heights so we can then calculate the height above sea level of the various parts above of the, uh, the excavation which is particularly important when you've got things like uh, similar levels coming through different pits and we want to be able to see whether that height is similar um, across the excavation where there's um, variations within the height undulations in the surface. Um, so that's basically the plan for the next five ten minutes. I finally managed to, to convince it to work. Uh, it's having a bit of a Sunday morning as we all are but now we're up and running.
going to say first of all thank you to all our volunteers all our helpers who have given days a couple of days over this long weekend so many thanks for all your hard work and all the, the fines cleaning um, this this is the our our end of dig roundup uh, and we've done a, a brilliant job we've got a, it's a complex little story as per usual uh, we've got our retaining wall coming down through here uh, where ant standing holding back uh, a raised wagon way to the the two buttresses the two piers coming out there just coming to a, a, a sudden stop uh, the wall face has got the slope on it uh, and we're reckoning that's a, a some sort of tipping mechanism for this embanked wagon, wagon way behind behind ant basically the our top 50 60 centimeters or so of this stuff we're standing is all built up victorian debris that's all the stuff you've been getting out there all the bottles the glass everything else it's landfill they've brought a lot of material in dumped it and basically leveled up the interior of the the coal fold itself our interesting archaeology is basically this this pit the ant's been digging so i will pass that on to his better knowledge to explain I shall, I shall, that. I, yeah. I shall descend into my hole. <laughs> Shortest man on site in the biggest hole. Yeah. Does it make my bum look big? Yeah. So what we've got, this is the retaining wall. It's beautifully built with a batter on it to make it thicker, to take a heavy load. We've got down here, I'm in the way of it, I'll move over here. With the help of my glamorous assistant, Miss Trowell, we can see we've got a sleeper block with four holes in it but one of them has caused the surface to crack and they've gone whoops yeah. that's not good we'll build it into the wall and this that, curiously that's exactly the same as the one behind you yes we're going to come on to that yeah, thank you absolutely this has been faced with a very thin you can just see it here render this is all visible this is beautiful stonework this has all been visible at some period coming down in here it was like being a child miner in the 1830s we've got a good 75 centimeters of coal from here all the way down at the bottom was coal getting bigger at the base but what we have found and it's typical of me we have got like last year we have got wet wood in situ so what we have working from this boat back we have a length of timber in here possibly square it's a good trowel width square and in it we've got one two three raw iron nails running perpendicular to that near this bulk we've got another piece of timber where i'm standing you'll have to believe because it's turning to mush is more timber it's soft wood between these two we've got very soft very friable mortar but sitting on top of this We've got pieces of glazed earthenware ridge tile from probably a very high status or at least a very swanky looking building. Turning round, this, these two piers and this battered wall are sitting on this mortar raft. What we have is mortar raft here, but in set into it a horizontal timber beam. This is again, it's soft wood, it's very degraded, very coarsely grained, quite soft. But here, at this end, we've got an uh, in situ piece of hardwood, very dense, very closely grained, probably sitting in a socket defining the mortar here. You've got another socket here with another piece of hardwood. This grey stuff uh, is organic, it's granular, there's a texture to it, we don't know what it is. So what they've done is they've made, set this piece of timber in this mortar and faced it. There's been another whack and great big piece of timber in here. That's been faced with mortar and the mortar's come over the top of it, slapping over it. This end is damaging excavation. This has been lost. That's not me digging through it. That's already gone. It's on a different orientation to the stone stuff. So this is probably phase one and earlier version of this coal drop mechanism probably got four upright vertical timbers with a tilting platform looking 
very similar to the uh, gallows frames we see and the photographs of Kakenzie Harbour for loading the boat. At some point they've come along and replaced it in stone. Much heavier weight. We've got the batter of the wall here. The wall thickens at the back again to take the weight of a wagon being turned up there and being tipped. The centre of gravity is moving forward which is why they made this wall so much thicker. And this layer, 75 centimetres of coal big proper coal at the bottom you could burn in your hearth up to small coal it's probably all the stuff that's tipped off those wagons as they've tipped over loading into road carts so whether this was ground level down here we're not sure but at least another meter or so up there for the tip this is probably a part of a set of points it's been built into this wall we've got four sets of holes instead of two so those holes and those holes either for two separate rails in chairs with the jaws coming up or more likely what we're looking at is a large rectangular casting and there's just two verticals either side and the rail slides in there as a type of stub point there's another example of this built into the wall in the harbour so it's we thought it was an accident yesterday now we're thinking this is deliberate and it's part of the point up to you alan right yeah um that's basically quite a, a complex little story there. Um, two, two phases, again, for the price of one. Um, an entirely unrecorded series of walls that don't appear on any of the plans. They're not on the Ordnance Survey maps. They're not on any of Stevenson's drawings. So, um, yeah, another turn up for the books. Uh, we're thinking we've got a post hole and a, a series of kind of negative features coming around this side. So there's obviously some sort of revetment coming out of it, a timber lined revetment to hold this natural sand into place there. I mean, that's, that's just redeposited natural sand off the beach. And um, we've seen that in the trenches at the bottom there as well. So for our three days digging, uh, we've got a, a fantastic little story to tell. So thank you very much once again for all your hard work. I, I buy your pint, but he's got the wallet. <laughs> right, thank you.